thrombus aspiration was once an established treatment option in patients with STEMI undergoing PCI, and it was once supported by the guidelines. Not anymore. We'll get to that later in this interview. Right now, I want to talk about thrombus aspiration in patients with STEMI presenting late after symptom onset. And this is Desh et al., and this is Dr. Desh, Stefan Desh, who is from the University of Schleswig Holstein in Lubbock, Lubbock, Germany. And you're looking at patients presenting 12 hours or greater after the beginning of symptoms. Yeah. Why? Um, Basically, these patients have very large thrombus burdens, so you could hypothesize that it might be more effective in these patients. On the other hand, you might also cause more severe uh, dislodgement into the microcirculation. So there, there, there is pro and cons in, in favor of, of a thrombus aspiration in these late patients. We did a randomized study in subacute STEMI patients. Uh, that means uh, as soon as late uh, 12 hours after symptom onset, up to 48 hours. So not the very late patient, but the in-between late patients. Right. And we randomized these patients to either manual thrombus aspiration up front, routine, uh, or conventional PCI by just ballooning and stenting. Uh, uh, the primary endpoint was microvascular obstruction on cardiac magnetic resonance imaging, so a marker of reperfusion injury. And you can um, um, easily quantify that on MRI, so you can really measure the extent of microvascular obstruction, and that's what we did. Now, you've got the results that are being posted online ahead of press in Jack Interventions, and the news wasn't particularly good, was it? No, we didn't find any significant differences between the two treatment arms, neither for the primary endpoint microvascular obstruction nor for any other measure, uh, such as final infarct size on MRI, uh, left ventricular injection fraction, volumes, angiographic markers such as post-PCI timiflow, blush grade, or enzymatic infarct size. So we've talked to Dr. Jolly several times who did the total trial, and it's really looking like the theory is not matching the clinical reality. I guess we have to admit that now, yeah? So we've all been, we, we all like positive results, but we have to face reality at times. And especially the total trial is very important in this regard, not only because of its size, but it's the first trial that gives us a warning signal in terms of safety. And that's something new in, uh, on the field because now we don't have uh, a neutral, a neutral um, um, uh, therapeutic, uh, option, it, it might even be dangerous. So, Which was the hint from total. Yeah. It might cause an increase in stroke. Yeah. Well, and that's why we're changing the guidelines. And here in the United States, uh, as of, I think, the 21st of October, you won't even see this interview until after that, because the 2011-2013 guideline recommendations from the ACC uh, included manual aspiration thrombectomy as a class 2A. It's reasonable for patients undergoing primary PCI. Now the 2015 focused update is going to be available and the recommendation is modified. There's now a class 2B, that's the usefulness of selective and bailout aspiration thrombectomy in patients undergoing primary PCI, but they're saying it's not well established. Class 3 now, no benefit at all for routine aspiration thrombectomy before primary PCI, it's just not useful. So those are the new 2015 focused update recommendations relating to the use of thrombus aspiration. Now, your, your guidelines haven't changed yet in Europe, correct? No, uh, the, the latest guidelines in this regard are the 2014 ESC revascularization guidelines, and they haven't incorporated the total trial. Um, but they will certainly change in the same manner, I guess. Yeah, yeah that would be yeah. my guess. Yeah. Uh, it, it's been a, a wonderful experience to watch this play out, but you know, you're kind of sorry it doesn't. But now we, I think we know more than we did when going into it, and so certainly clinical practice has more foundation to say, okay, let's move on to something else. Yeah. They did that with mechanical uh, thrombectomy some time ago. Yeah, yeah. And so now manual has and unfortunately gone the same way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the paper is in Jack Intervention, so please make sure you check it out. It is already online. And uh, for CardioSource World News, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.